Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to continue to work in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. And what I've decided to do is to go over each of the 11 adjustments that are available in this module. Now I can't fit all 11 adjustments into one video and I do want to cover all 11 of these adjustments in detail. So what I've decided to do is to do a separate video for each of the adjustments. In this video we're going to cover the tone and color adjustment panel. Now we have touched on the tone and color adjustment panel in two previous videos, but we really didn't go into detail. So that's what I hope these next 11 videos will be able to go into detail about all these adjustments that are available in this module because I really do want to make you a master of On One Photo Raw 2018. So each of the videos will probably be a little shorter, but this one's going to be a little longer only because the tone and color adjustment panel is a little more complicated than the other adjustments. Now, to begin with, when you bring your RAW file into the develop module, the first adjustment you're probably going to do is the tone and color adjustment. You don't have to do these in order or any specific order, but it is recommended, and I do recommend, that you start out with the tone and color. Do this one first. This gets your RAW file at least looking the way you want it to look. And then you could add some flourish to your image with some of the other modules. So you're going to start here. Now, you don't have to go top to bottom right in order. You could jump around. Many of us kind of have our own way of doing things when we process our images. Personally, usually, I catch the exposure correct in camera. So I don't really have to adjust the exposure slider. But if you do, you'd probably want to do that first. So you just want to make sure your exposure is correct. After that is contrast. And usually I don't like to adjust contrast early in my workflow. I do have a video where I go over kind of my philosophy of why I process images the way I do. And usually I start out with highlights, midtones, and shadows, then go on to whites and blacks because I tend to make my image flat with the highlights and, sh and sh midtones and shadows and then bring back some uh, contrast with the whites and blacks and then add more contrast with the contrast slider and the structure slider. So that's what I'm going to do here. But just keep in mind that you don't have to do it in the order I'm doing it and you could do it in any way that is comfortable for you. With this image here, I usually will start with the highlights. And with most of my landscape images, I like to have detail in the sky. Especially here, we have some nice clouds in the sky. And I'd like to bring out some of the detail. So I'm going to bring the highlight slider down. Now, there really isn't a formula for how to adjust highlights, midtones, and shadows. You could always just come up here and click this Auto button. And it will automatically adjust the sliders to what on one thinks they should be adjusted to but personally I never ever like what on one tells me that should be or any program for that matter not just on one so I will not auto adjust so I'll come in here and I'll bring just highlights down and look at the highlights till I see some detail come in then I'll move down to midtones and you look for the stuff that's more of a mid-tone, and I'll just move it around. Again, there isn't really a you know, set way that I'll do it. It really kind of depends on what mood I'm in, what I'm going for with the scene, and how I remember what the scene looked like when I was there. Because let's face it, when you're shooting raw, your, your raw image usually is so drab and boring looking, you probably are second guessing yourself why you even took the image to begin with. So I just kind of adjust midtones a little bit to the right here. And shadows, I want to open up a little bit because like the highlights, I like to see some detail in my shadows. So 
I'm going to look at the darkest part and I'm just going to move the shadows to the right enough so that I see some detail in those darker areas. Now, whites and blacks. I do like to use uh, the kind of built-in automatic white and black point that is available in on one photo raw 2018 but then i will adjust it off that automotive automatic point to a point that i like to use so to get that automatic point i mentioned in a previous video hold the j key in this turns on the clipping indicators then come in here with the whites and move it up until you see some red come in the screen now, the automatic point was probably just so no red at all is coming through, just like that. That would be the automatic point for the white adjustments. Similarly, for blacks, hold that J key in again and keep holding it in and bring blacks down till you see some blue splotches come in. Now, personally, I like to adjust this so that there is some clipping. That means there's absolutely no detail wherever those blue uh, splotches are being shown. That's just the way I like to adjust my landscape images. I like to have the blacks clip a little bit, but I do not like my highlights or whites to clip at all. So this is the way I would adjust them. I encourage you to experiment and see what works for you and what you like. Maybe you like it the opposite way. You like your whites to clip and your blacks not to. Or maybe you like them both to clip or whatever. So adjust it and see what works for you. Next, I'll work on contrast and structure. I'll usually jump up to contrast first and add some contrast. And again, it's just by feel. I'm just looking. And then I'll go down to structure and I'll add structure. And structure is really mid-tone contrast. And if you move it to the right, it kind of gives the effect that you're making your image sharper. And if you move it to the left, it makes your image look softer. So this is, again, all just personal taste. And you could do it to whatever works for you. So I'm just going to move it to the right. And it just kind of adds some nice uh, clarity, it looks like, down here into the middle. And I mentioned clarity because structure in on one photo raw 2018 is pretty much the same thing as the clarity adjustment that's in lightroom so i like that now there's really no haze in this image if there were i would move this to the left to try to eliminate the haze and you could see it's adding more structure to the image as well in this case as i move it to the left and if i move it to the right it just kind of takes away some contrast and makes the image look a little flatter so in this case, I think maybe I'll just move it very slightly to the left, minus 5. So it's just adding a little more depth to the image. And when I say depth, I'm meaning that the uh, histogram, and if you click up here in levels, that is giving you the histogram. It's meaning that the histogram is pretty much spread out all the way across the tonal range. So I have pixels represented for every tonal value. So we have a lot of depth to the image. So that's what I like with that haze control, a little bit to the left. Now we jump down to the color section of the tone and color adjustment. There's all different ways to adjust the white balance. Now it never really says white balance, it just says color. But this is what this is, is white balance. The easiest way is to use the drop down. And you could do this to color correct your image so you have the correct white balance for the scene or you might want to use it just for some creative purpose to add a tint to the image a color tint to the image to give it a certain feel blue tones tend to be calming and soothing and warmer tones like yellows and oranges are more vibrant and active and give that feeling of like summer things like that and you could do that with your white balance, or in this case, it's called color adjustments. Now, with the drop down, all you have to do is open it and then hover over each of the adjustments, and those adjustments will be applied to the image temporarily or previewed on the image. Now, you could see as shot auto and daylight didn't really change. I'll move to cloudy and it will get slightly warmer. You could see that. 
Shade, it gets even warmer. Tungsten will give it a really cool look. Fluorescent, again, is a little cooler. Flash, uh, it seemed to give it a little warm look. Flash could give you anything, really, on these things. And custom is when you manually adjust the sliders. And you could, of course, do that. You could just come down here and manually move the sliders around. And you could see that the temperature slider is in degrees Kelvin. That is what color temperature white balance usually is measured in degrees Kelvin. If you don't like using degrees Kelvin, you could click right here where it says degrees K. Just click there and it will give just a monetary value or not a mon a numerical value is a better is the correct term for this slider. So it basically is at zero and then you would move it off of zero. I personally like to have that. I like to see the exact color temp that my camera gave the scene. And I could move it from there. So I could manually come in here and if I move it to the left, I'll cool everything down a little bit. And if I move it to the right, I'll warm everything up. Below that is tint. A lot of times you just move tint as a creative tool. You'd move it just to make the image look like you want it to look. But what you could use it for and what many professional photographers do is if they do warm up the image, say, with their temperature, in this case, warm up the image with the temperature slider to the right, and they tend to make their highlights too warm, they could come up here with the tint control and move it to take some of that warmth away from the highlights or in the shadows. It depends. So you could always come in and adjust these manually in a creative way or just for a way that you think better represents what the scene really looked like, the actual color temperature that was there that day. Now again, you could just come in and go to Ash Shot and it will reset those sliders. Now another way you could adjust just white balance, or as on one calls it, color, is you could use this little dropper. And what you would do is you would click on it. And when you click on it, you could see it look it turns active and your cursor turns into a plus sign. What you want to do is you want to find something that is color neutral in the shot, preferably something that is a middle gray or an 18% gray. Those of you that use 18% gray cards know what that shade of gray is. So you would look for something that you know that was in that scene that was middle gray and tr click right on that. So I'm going to click right there and just click once and you could see it automatically adjusted the sliders to give a white balance representation for that where I clicked to be middle gray. Now, it may work, it may not, and you could just keep clicking on this little eyedropper and keep sampling other spots in your image until you get a spot that you think really does work or it does look fine. So I like it right there, so I'm going to leave it there. So that looks good to me. You also could come in here and just manually write in a number. If someone, if you're going for a specific look and the instructions you have, say to dial in a color temperature of 5,500 degrees Kelvin, you could come right in here and type it directly in if you want. You also could do that with any adjustment. You could just come in here and, and use the numerical keypad on your keyboard and type in a number. So I like the adjustment as it is, so I think that's a decent white balance or color adjustment. Now we do have the saturation and vibrant sliders. Now, I've mentioned many times, and I'm sure you guys probably get tired of hearing me say it, the difference between these sliders. Saturation, when you move it to the right, is going to increase the saturation of every single pixel in the image. Even if it's already at saturation. When you move this slider to the right, it will oversaturate that color. So you can see it's oversaturated yellows and it's oversaturated some of the greens. So it's, well, saturation, when you move it to the right, you do just, you will be increasing the saturation of every single color. If you move it to the left, you'll decrease the saturation of every color. All the way to the left, you'll have a black and white image. Now to reset any of the sliders, just double click on the name of the slider and it will reset to its default position. Now the vibrant slider is a little more subtle than the saturation slider. It will increase 
the saturation of all the colors, but it will only bring them to saturation. You won't oversaturate any colors when you move the vibrant slider to the right. Moving it to the left will remove color from all the different pixels in the image, but it really won't give you a black and white shot. It will get just to the edge of being black and white, but just leave a touch of color there. So personally, creatively, I like to use the vibrant slider. A lot of times I like to have a reduced color shot and I'll bring vibrance down a little bit, but not all the way, just to have some color in there. But many times I like to increase the vibrance of the shot or the color saturation of the shot, but I don't want to really saturate too many colors. So I'll bring this up a little bit. Now, if you're working on a portrait, I strongly suggest that you don't use saturation at all, that you use vibrance. Then click this little button right here. And what that will do, it will reduce the vibrance in the pinks and reds so that you're not oversaturating any skin tones and it doesn't make your model look like he or she has a sunburn. So that will help with portraits. But in this case, obviously, we don't need to click that. Now, what Purity and Shadows, Purity does for highlights and shadows is it just kind of removes the color from the highlights and shadows. And for, to demonstrate that, I'll turn saturation all the way up. I'll even turn vibrance all the way up. You can see how the highlights now have really a color cast to them as well as the shadows. So if that happens and you want to remove that color cast from the highlights and or the shadows, just move the slider to the right. In this case, as I move the highlights slider to the right, you can see that the color is being taken away from the highlights. When I move it to the extreme right at 100, you can see it's pretty much black and white. Similarly, with shadows, when I move that to the right, it will take the color cast away from the shadows. And when it's all the way to the right, it pretty much will give you a black and white image in the shadows. So use those to help uh, eliminate any color cast you might have induced in the highlights and shadows when you adjusted either saturation or vibrance. So in this case, we're going to turn vibrance up a little. That's what I like there. So that is the adjustments of the tone and color adjustment panel in the develop module of On One Photo Raw 2018. In our next video, we'll tackle the details panel in detail. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.